Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. So today is a very special type of haul. It's more of like a sample haul. And I'm actually gonna use this to kind of jumpstart a video series I talked to you guys about before where I pull at random fragrances from my sample bag because I don't sample a lot, as you guys know, from my very extensive blind buying adventures, um, like blind buying, bottles <laughs> adventures and I'm, I'm just always going to be that kind of girl but I have gotten better about sampling certain things in comparison to like the zero percent I was at before and I'm not precious with my samples the way that I am with my bottles that I keep them all like for for my collecting purposes my samples, I do only keep the ones I'm using. So I thought I would do this series where I pull at random from the bag, spray them, kind of see if I'm actually interested and then keep the ones I like and then um, know which ones I'm gonna give away. Because throughout the years, I've done that with my friends and family, like close people to me, but I never filmed the videos and I thought you guys would be interested. So we have six fragrances to pull from today, but today's sample video to start the series like i said is special because it's a haul and it's a blind buy sample haul so i'm really excited to get into them because so many of them are fragrances that you guys have asked me about and i've never owned or tried so we're just gonna get right into it there's only one of six that i have tried before um and i'll tell you about that when we get to it but the rest are all totally new for me and there's three women and three men fragrances, so it's just the perfect mix. So we're just gonna get into it. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. It very much helps my channel. It just helps obviously keep me motivated, but it really does help me allow to make videos for you guys. So if you've been watching for a very long time or just your first video, don't forget to subscribe. So we will start with a fragrance that has been so, so talked about at least for the past six months, if not well before that. And I have not picked it up out of some reasons that I just feel like it is not going to compare to the hype, but I, I have no idea because I've never tried it out and I did not live near somewhere that I could sample it and I felt like this would be one fragrance I would want to sample before I picked it up because it just seemed like it wasn't going to be my jam. And that is Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Belle. Um, I know it's very, very loved. I know that it's like every review I see is above and beyond loving it. So I don't know why I feel that way, but I think it's because it's, it's always described as smelling like pear vanilla. And I don't especially love either of those notes in that I wouldn't like them blind. Like I, it takes a special reason for me to like both. So I was like, well, I don't know if it's gonna work out really. So, okay, I don't have any perfumes here. So I was always curious, but this has pear, bergamot, leather, floral notes, vanilla, vetiver, amber, and musk. Let's see if this scent truly is worth all the hype um, and is full bottle worthy because I don't know. I just can't imagine it. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, wow. I might be biting my words. <laughs> I really like it. Wow, okay. I do really like the pear in this. The pear in this is quite, um, it smells like a pear, a hard candy, like a, I can't think of the brand, but those like very juicy hard candies, like the, the fruity flavored ones, it smells like a, like a pear flavored one. And the vanilla in this, okay, this is interesting. The vanilla in this is a little bit venturing into Bath and Body Works vanilla candle vanilla, but I, and I was curious whether I'd smell leather because it seems like such an out of, out of place note in this fragrance, but I do. And it's more of like a, like a very soft suede leather. Like it's not at all leathery and super strong, but I think it just helps at least me 
deal with a fragrance that the, uh, with a vanilla that's kind of venturing in Bath and Body Works vanilla candle territory that I'm not a fan of. I do like it. Okay, I get the appeal. I I don't know if it's full bottle worthy for me at full price or anything, but now having tried it, I'm way more likely to pick it up on a good deal. Um, there are very few fragrances that I think are like full bottle worthy for full price, um, just because there's so many great deals out there, why not? And I, I maintain that this wouldn't be, but I will buy my words in that I do kind of like it. Okay. Well, that was nice. So that's La Belle by Jean-Paul Gaultier. It was a nice surprise. I definitely had lower expectations of it, so I'm glad that went well. The second one, again, super, super liked. I think it's because I don't like the bottle, which isn't really a deterrent for me ever, but just something about the bottle. Ooh. Okay, so it's Perfect by Marc Jacobs. I don't usually like Marc Jacobs fragrances. There's been a few here and there, which are gems, but his bottle designs and my taste aren't on par with one another, but that doesn't really matter. It's about what's in the scent and yeah. Okay, so this has rhubarb, narcissus, almond milk, cashmere in, cedar, and yeah, daffodil. So I'm intrigued. I'm definitely intrigued. I've heard that the scent smells better than what you imagine from the bottle if you're not a fan of the whole vibe. It has almond milk, which I die for electronic fragrance, and it has rhubarb amazing. I don't own or have smelled very many Narcissus fragrances, so I'm all on board because I actually love that flower. Um, and I'd be down to have a good Narcissus scent if it smells. Ooh. Am I about to bite my words on everything? Like, I really thought I was going to not like these fragrances, but it definitely has a tart rhubarb, which I adore. And then some floral. I don't know if it's Narcissus exactly, at least not the actual floral scent that I'm imagining, but I could be wrong. It's been a while. It does smell kind of creamy. I don't know if it smells like almond milk, I'll be honest, but it smells other, like the rhubarb and floral you get, and the rhubarb is very sharp as always, but there's a creaminess in the base, which maybe that's what the almond milk is is giving. Okay, it's it's definitely unique. I feel like I don't have a lot of fragrances that would smell exactly like this. Even my other rhubarb centric fragrances. I like it. Oh my god, you guys. I've This has taken a completely positive turn, but Yeah, I really do like it. I like it more than La Belle, if I'm being honest with you. Smelling them next to one another, this is more interesting and it's a little less sweet. The vanilla in La Belle is quite, it's quite sweet. It's like vanilla candle sweet. Um, but this I am all for, oh my God. Okay, I, it might be full bottle worthy, I will say that. And then the last woman's fragrance before we get to the men's ones is by Guerlain and it's one of the Aqua Allegoria. This one came out in 2019, I believe, so I've never smelled it and it's Flora Salvagia. So this one is supposed to be super watermelon-like, which I am all for watermelon fragrance. It, this has watermelon, bergamot, creamy, or oh, cherry blossom, pear, rose, white musk, violet, and woody notes. I love watermelon fragrances, which is so funny because I, I love it when it's like a candy or in a fragrance, but I don't actually like watermelon, <laughs> um, the actual fruit, but I do like the flavoring and I love it in fragrance, which it's not super used all the time. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna spray a little bit more because I feel like this is strange, but I feel like I kind of get a cucumber note. Okay, hmm. I do get watermelon, it's interesting. I don't know why I was smelling cucumber. Is watermelon cucumber like a bath of, no. 
Cucumber lemon? No, I don't know. Cucumber melon. That's what it's kind of reminding me of. Cucumber melon um, back in the day, like 90s Bath and Body Works body spray that hits a nostalgia if you're from that time. It gave me a little bit of that, of that cucumber melon scent. Um, but you do get watermelon and I feel like I get bergamot or some, does it? Yeah, perfect. I like it. I don't love it. Um, I have Tiazura in the Aqua Allegoria line and that one I like more if I'm just to compare the two. Um, and I know what Neroli Bianca smells like because I bought that for my mother. It's kind of like her signature scent and I do like that one too. This is interesting. The watermelon is a bit too realistic of a water, like it almost smells too much like real watermelon and not candied water watermelon or, or tart enough. So, you know, if you like it, then great. Yeah, I like, I like it, but I don't love. How about that? I, I like, but I don't love. I would have to wear it more, but I'm intrigued. I'm definitely intrigued. So that one was from the Aqua Allegoria line, Flora Salvaggia. All right, so now we're gonna get to the men's fragrances. I'm gonna start with the one I'm most intrigued by, and that's Gucci Guilty's Love Edition Pour Homme. I sampled a while back the Gucci Guilty Love Edition Pour Femme, and again, I had pretty low expectations of it at the time, and I really did like it. I love, I love the bottle color. It's like this really beautiful pink. I loved the scent, and I've always really loved the bottle color on this. This shade green, you guys, I'm all for. So I was intrigued. I mean, I the women's version really did impress me, so why wouldn't this one? This has ginger, kumquat, orange, pink pepper, rosemary, lavender, geranium, vetiver, patchouli, and benzoin. Oh, okay. Hmm. Right off the bat, not loving it. It's quite peppery, like it's very zingy and peppery. Um, it smells like with a, with a look like this, I expected it to be a little bit more fresh. I don't know, it kind of smells a little, like it's giving me very cheap 90s aftershave where it's like peppery and strong. It doesn't really smell modern. Like the most modern part of it is you get like whiffs of that kumquat, which is like a super, like it's a juicy citrus fruitiness that's nice. Um, but I don't like that peppery zinginess really. Yeah, it smells like, uh, it smells like very inexpensive kind of dated aftershave. So that was disappointing. We'll just move right along. Um, I will save the one I've smelled before for last. Then we'll move to Prada's Carbon Luna Rosa. This is also Eau de Toilette, I have to open this one. This has bergamot, pepper, lavender, metallic notes, coal, watery notes, soil tincture, which I thought was interesting, um, and broxin and patchouli. So this one I expected to like even less, um, but obviously my guessing has been all over the place wrong for this. Oh, let me, let me spray a little more. Okay, it's quite light. I feel like I sprayed two or three sprays and it's sitting pretty close to the skin. It's definitely metallic. It's kind of like a metallic citrus. Um, it's all right. It's not, it's nowhere as peppery as the Gucci Guilty, um, which is, which is mellowing out a little bit, but I don't know. It, this also isn't really speaking to me. I feel like on a bad day, maybe the metallic notes can rub most people the wrong way. It's not bad, but I wouldn't go out of my way to buy that one either. That's Prada Carbon Luna Rosa. Having said that, the, the Gucci Guilty Pour Homme is really mellowing out. 
which is nice. But anyways, we will move on to the last one and that's Armani Code uh, by Giorgio Armani. This one I have smelled before. This used to be uh, for many years, for like a decade. This used to be my favorite um, cologne for men, scent for men, fragrance for men. Yeah, uh, there were a good 10 years I was like obsessed with this scent. I think I've, I still like it. Like there's a nostalgia there. This has lemon, bergamot, star anise, orange blossom, guyac wood, leather, tonka bean, and tobacco. I think it's really, I think it's still an attractive scent. There's always gonna be a nostalgia. Wow, I haven't smelled in so long. There's always gonna be a nostalgia for me of, of probably like the ages of 15 to 18 in particular, I really loved, but for like a good 10 years, I really liked it. 15 to 18, this was it. Like I was obsessed with this scent on guys and not for me to wear, but to smell on other people. Um, then I think I started to really like Dior Sauvage, um, the Eau de Parfum. So not the Eau de Toilette and not the, not the Parfum, but the Eau de Parfum is still, I think now that's my favorite like designer fragrance for men. But this, yeah, it's got a special place in my heart for sure. And it always will. Okay. So this is actually hard because I like to put my fragrances in order. And I have to say, I didn't really like the Gucci Guilty and the Prada when I first sprayed them. But that's, you know, even with the first impressions, a couple minutes later, or in some cases, like one or two minutes, it, they both have mellowed out in, in a really nice way. But I think I can agree that they're gonna be in the bottom uh, compared to the woman's fragrances because, okay. Actually, I have, I have an idea. Okay, so I'm gonna put them in order from best to worst, yeah. So I would say honestly in last place, in the sense of like which one would I buy a full bottle of, Aqua Allegoria Flora Sal Salvagia, I really don't like. Even as it's staying on my skin, I would put it in sixth place. It's not a full hate, but the watermelon is, it's rubbing me the wrong way. There's something about it that's just not really settling the best on my skin. So for me, that would have to be in sixth place. In fifth place, I would put the Gucci Guilty Love Edition Pour Homme. There's still that kind of remnants of inexpensive aftershave that I'm not really a fan of, but it's definitely mellowed down from how bad it was when I first sprayed it. When I first sprayed it, it was like an immediate hate, but it's better, but it's still bottom tier. The only reason this is lower, the Sadovagia, is it, it actually, I don't know, it has this weird, weird thing that it's doing that I, I'm really just not liking on the skin. Whereas the pepperiness, it's not like, I don't like it, but I know what it's doing on the skin. I just don't really like it. Then in fourth place, I would say like fourth, yeah. In fourth place, I would say, hmm, this is hard. Maybe I'd put the, the Prada, Prada Carbon Luna Rosa. It has mellowed down and it's actually not that bad uh, anymore. The metallicness kind of goes away relatively quickly. It's definitely all right. And yeah, I wouldn't go out of my way. There's a lot more men's fragrances that I would wear or would give someone, but it's kind of middle of the road. Now we hit a hard spot because La Belle or Armani Code? I think, ooh, this is hard. I think I, they're very close to one another in terms of preference because La Belle is new and it did kind of surprise me. I would put La Belle a little bit slightly lower because it does have that vanilla that is quite strong and prominent that is a little too sweet. It's like on the touch of being too sweet for me. And then Armani Code is like a ride or die nostalgia kind of scent that I think is kind of unisex, um, but it's cause I love it. 
And so that has to be in second place. And then in first place, very surprisingly, Perfect by Marc Jacobs. I love, I really, really liked this one. It's got beautiful rhubarb floral notes and it's creamy um, and not especially like lect tonic, but definitely creamy um, from the cashmere in or the almond milk, whatever it is, I'm all for. So that was my sample haul. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below whether you want to keep going with these samples. I think it's fair to say that I'm going to give away um, the Aqua Allegoria and the Gucci Guilty Love Edition for sure. And I'm on the fence about Prada Carbon Luna Rosa, but those two for sure I'm going to give away from my collection. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.